guys and welcome back to my channel and in today's video we're going to talk about the new guild wars map and how this map affects the current roster of dps's and how i approach this map with my own units and my own team building exactly who in this map was powered down and who has gained the advantage besides the obvious strike attackers so let's begin if the previous map was made for units with versatile range height and high mobility, this map is made for the other end of the spectrum. This map is 11 tiles long and 11 tiles wide with a height difference of 0 to 1 all throughout. A generally flat map. It has a gaping hole in the middle that is 5 tiles wide and 5 tiles long with 2 small paths to cross it. So, what does this information tell us? Number one for me is arithmeticians get powered down. Let me explain before you throw pitchforks at me. Arithmeticians have skills that get multiplier boosts as long as the required conditions are met, such as the target meets a certain height or level. One of their strongest skills, Cura and Holy, gets a multiplier boost when the target unit is at a specific height of either 2 or 3 depending on the equipped passive. With the map being a flat surface, the Holy loses a potential damage boost of around 60%. This boost could have helped one-shotting dark units, but with this map, that would not be the case. This is similar with Cura, which loses a boost in healing potential with the flat map. Although their Waterga and Watera skills are not affected because they are level-based, making them still a viable unit. But as, a, as we've said, and for the reasons we've said earlier, this map definitely limits arithmeticians and they cannot reach their full potential. Rangers and gunners have also switched positions where gunners now have the advantage over rangers. With no height difference, this means range height is not a requirement, an advantage that the rangers had over gunners on the previous map. Gunners have an advantage over rangers in this map because of their higher damage and ability to chain and no cast time in their skills, making them a more viable option than rangers with the exception of maybe ha having no abilities like sharpshoot. Melee units once again have the opportunity to shine and are less challenged by this map by obvious reasons. It's flat and there are no um, obstacles. But they are reined in or balanced by the gaping hole in the middle and become easy targets at choke points. Most slash units are quite bulky that helps them power through these choke points as well. It is good to note that a Slash team having an Exorcist card or Agayon card will definitely become a powerful force. Death Piercing and Slash Resistance Piercing really have changed the game a lot since it can turn any unit or tank into Swiss cheese. With that being said, Slash units are very strong contenders in a map that does not go against them. Because they are supported by vision cards and a plethora of other slash units that you can mix and match with. On the other hand, Strike is a melee attack type that is strong against the current roster of units because most units are weak to those attack types. Although this is the case, there are some balances in place like how Strike is not currently supported by any good vision cards or espers. Dragoons, on the other hand, neither gained nor lost any advantage on this map since they are very versatile and can work with this map very nicely as well. To be honest, I'm starting to like Dragoons and realizing how great and versatile they are, but I haven't built any, so yeah, I'm going to work on that. Generally, Pierce Attack is still good since a lot of units using Guild Wars are still 
week to Pierce, and they are supported by good vision cards and espers such as Demon Wall and Titan. But there are new espers, new equipment, and units that serve to counter them that are slowly gaining traction. So just to keep aware on that. Since this map doesn't have an increased accuracy buff, sorry, excuse me, evade units might become or will become a suitable candidate once again, but with a lot of VC, Esper, and equipment requirements. Not to mention that speaking of VCs and Espers, there are also a lot of those that are coming out with high accuracy compared to before, not to mention most evade units do not have other defense capability other than evade with the exception of Laswell. Faced with the right team composition to counter evade, they can be easily suppressed. Sakura is also going to be a strong contender in this map with her AoE abilities and being a light magic user and since there are a lot of uh, dark units that's still going around, she can be very effective at those choke points at the side, clearing away enemy units. Magic units, uh, which is the category Sakura is part of, where you could say half of the unit roster is weak to them, so they are very good, but at the same time, they can be easily countered by other units who are very strong against them. So, generally speaking, this map is fair for all attack types, so the meta or resistances and attack types of the roster of your units becomes a very important point to consider like the cards you possess the espers you have leveled will be a huge factor here to determine your team composition in my case i have built an earth magic team which i will enumerate the reasons why so maybe this can help you decide on how to build your team as well it would help if you watch my team compositions video as I would be discussing the next portion in relation to that. So, I only have Raryu and Venera as a piercing unit. In my team compositions video, the first rule or the first step is to pick a piercing unit to lead your team. This will narrow down the choices you have when you're building it. It's important to note what Venera and Raryu are as units. Venera is an evade physical slash or missile unit, while Raryu is a bruiser magic slash or magic attack type unit. As I've said, this is important in selecting a unit to lead your team, understanding what they are and what kind of support they need. So in my case, I picked Raryu over Venera because I have more vision cards and equipment and espers to support Raryu over Venera. First, let's talk about cards. If you don't have an abundance of piercing units, you are hoping your lead can carry the team. That is why having a vision cards that support them is essential. When it comes to, well, for me, when it comes to building teams, two cards can help with determining whether what you should build. The Titan card and Skahal card. Why, you ask? They both have Man Eater plus 20, Skahal for Magic, and Titan for Physical. In my case, I have Skahal maxed and Titan at 0 stars. So that's a point for Raryu. Another thing is to fully max. Another thing or another point that I have is if I were to fully maximize Titan, I have to have a Pierce unit to be included in my party, which I do not have. On the other hand, I have tons of magic units that can maximize the Skahal card like Kilfe, Mediena, and Ayaka. Kilfe, who adds a point of choosing Raryu since they can have an Earth Elemental chain. 
Is Kahal card and Titan card necessary? No. But for me, this is for me, it's a high value card for both physical and magical units as it's a very flexible card compared to others. I won't delve deep into this as it's a topic for another video. So let's leave it at that for now and maybe I can uh, explain myself more in future videos. Next, I have a Max Helena card and have no Scion of House Beloof. Black Gross You Are or the Helena card gives agility for magic units while Scion of S or SOHB is an agility card for physical units. Again, is this necessary? No, depending on your team. But in the case of Raryu and Venera, for me, they both both need it as where you is generally slow so having the black rose you are is a huge speed boost for him and Venera shines with SHOB as agility plays a huge role in evasion having a guy on max would have helped in Venera's case as well but I don't have it maxed at all so it would have wouldn't have been a good idea for me Lastly, I have Shiva and Secret Feelings maxed, but I lack evade units with firepower to utilize this. So again, it's a point against Venera. Although I do have Ketone, um, I would have preferred any evade unit with death piercing or the ability to one shot. Because sometimes evade units, that's all it takes for them to go down. One shot. So, I would rather have an evade unit that can one-shot the other enemy, lessening my risk. Because having evade is uh, risky as fuck. Because they can get one-shot, as I've said. So, I, I would rather have a death-piercing unit that can one-shot to lessen the risk. That's all that I'm saying. Talking about... Uh, so... That's, uh, again, my issue with Venera. If I had Laswell or maybe Ruin Knight's turn, I would have considered her more. Next is about Espers. Generally speaking, I have ample Espers for both magic and physical units. So, it's quite fair on at this point. The greater difference lies in the equipment where I have a max platinum rod while I don't have any daggers or swords or even evade equipment that is max. I know it's horrible, time and energy is my enemy. So yeah, sadly, that's how it rolls. So look at your roster, then decide who is going to lead your team. Do you have the cards to support your lead? Do you have the units to support your lead? More on that if you watch my team compositions video that I will link in my description. Do you have enough vision cards to support them? Um, speaking of vision cards, I want to share a tip in Guild Wars in general. There are two types of vision cards for me, offensive and defensive ones. The difference between the two is when you pick an offensive card the card that you pick depends on your team while defensive cards depends on who you are going at to attack it's easier to use offensive cards for gvg than defensive ones because you don't know who you are going to attack or you don't know who's going to attack you so it's for me, it's easier to out DPS than to out defend For, and generally it means more chances of success. Defensive cards, as I've said, has high dependence in the fact that you can prepare against your enemy. That may be useful in arena but not much with guild wars. It is cheaper to make your team have a stronger DPS than having a plethora of defensive cards to defend every attack type there is. And it just so happens that maybe the enemy that will attack you is not what you defended for. So yeah, I won't delve in deeper um, 
once more about this because this is a new topic altogether that I can make a video about some other time. The next question is, do you have enough espers to support your plan build? Do you have the right equipment? If your answer is yes, then whatever you're planning to build, then that's the route that you can take. Um, I think that is all that I can say for this video. And obviously, uh, this Guild Wars map is a free for all. Similar with snowy fields. It has, I mean, it has a lot of similarities with Snowy Field. So, team compositions that have dominated it, like Men in Black, the Kane, Knight of Ruins turn, and then Dwayne composition will definitely still be there. And um, of course, the Sakura or the Light team is going to emerge as well as a huge contender and of course gunners evade units are going to be a huge thing so it's almost impossible to defend for all of those so what i would suggest really is as i've explained earlier pick your main dps and build on it offensively not defensively but if defensively is all how you can go for um, what you have, then just go ahead with it. So without further ado, here is a demo reel of how my team performs in guild wars and mock battles. Just take note though, since this is a magic team, definitely they're going to die against like a magic tank. So like... Let's not push it. Um, so yeah, without further ado, these are my demos.